and it's windy again this morning. But we're at max efficiency today. We've got three different groups out, two groups of shotguns, and myself with the bow again. I'm back in that spot where Nick and I had the encounter with the hen the other day. It's supposed to be sunny in the low 80s today, a little bit warm, but it'd be nice if this wind would lay down a little bit. So you hear better. There's one. Way down in there. Off the point of that ridge, down in. Give it a couple minutes on this ridge here, see if I can hear anything else over on the other side. Otherwise, to back up, go around and try to get on that long ridge right there and get down closer to that one. I can walk 15 miles shit hunting and never find one of these. But I'm walking around in the dark trying to get set up on turkeys is when I find them. <laughs> That's a good one, boy. That's a really good one. It's April 17th. And me and Hayden dove in real deep today. Expected the turkeys to be roosted off the points of these ridges. But the way that we had to come in here, there's only one access point. The turkeys are roosted closer to the access and working away from the access. So we pretty much got to walk up underneath roost areas to get back here. That's why we're in here so early. And in doing so, I just about tripped over this thing. I just looked down in my red light and I was like, are those tines sticking up? Sure enough, me and Aiden hunted in here for deer last fall. Saw a pile of turkeys, several long beards. Nothing like that though. Not like this. <laughs> Didn't see any deer like this the whole time. We did see lots of long beards in here kind of coming in here blind, haven't listened here yet this spring, haven't scouted in here this spring. But I wish this wind would lay a little bit. We'll be getting daylight here in about 15 minutes. We're gonna slip up into these pines and start here. If we hear something, we're just gonna go to it. Wonder if we all split up and you go over that side about 100 yards and I go about 100 yards in there. Maybe try to stay within sight. Okay. Sounds good. And I'll scream at you if I hear one. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll, I'll scream. I'll, I'll do a two note owl hoot. Just one of those. Okay. Just out hooted. Like you heard one. Did you hear one? Yeah, that way. But he's like not too far. He might just be down in the bottom, potentially. He's like right on this line there. Straight out. Yeah. So we should probably make some ground on think move that way a little bit.
I'm looking at it looks like a hand or a jack. Jakey. Got a bunch of turkeys roosted out the end of this ridge. When me and Hayden were crawling over here, I could see a Jake up there in the tree, but he was not one of the turkeys that was gobbling. So I'm hoping this ain't a big group of Jakes and that there's a long bird or two in there. But we'll see, they're only 80 to 100 yards from us. biggest bird that I saw with the big white and red head was 100% a jake. Yeah. And he'd been gobbling. I couldn't tell what the other two or three turkeys were. You want to just get on the other side of the log and try to call them back in? Just to be sure. I mean, we might as well in the event that they do come back in. Yeah. 
90% sure that time they go, ciao. Coming back, alright. That antler is nice. That's kind of useful. There's a kick stand. There they are. Right down my gun. Sam. Right down my gun, 50 yards. Ain't gonna gobble when they got. Uh, every time they do, Jake's just run in on them and pester them. Yeah. Like seeing Jake's though. Yeah. Lots of them. But that'd have been close enough for you. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I, think I, I think I could have killed him with my slingshot from there. <laughs> they sound like long beards. Yeah, a couple of them did. That's the crazy thing is there is, we know for sure, there's more than one long beard in here. Mm -hmm. There's several. <laughs> he ain't gonna gobble anywhere around them Jake's though. Why is that? Why do they like to pester the toms so much? Just because they're trying to kick, kick them away from the hens and stuff like that? Yeah. It doesn't become an issue if you have a big group of toms. Mm -hmm. But if you have like single subordinate gobblers that are alone, that are alone typically in goblin, mm -hmm. they won't. I, that's my theory, at least, is that it'll hush them up when you've got big droves of jakes. Because, you know, that lone tom pops up on that ridge over there and starts gobbling over a bottom with a bunch of other turkeys trying to call a hen up to him. And those guys show up first, and then go to fighting him and pestering him. Hayden and I are going to press on. That's three days in a row of calling in jakes to start the season here. <laughs> the jimmies have got us in a bind right now. Or is trying to kill a longbeard. We just must press on. Let me just uh, get these bad boys on.
<laughs> not good. <laughs> I might be staying here. <laughs> so I might be staying on this side. What an idiot. Here I go. You going in? Not really. The there Jack Sparrow run kind of just saves everything. That was perfect. <laughs> That's what three seconds of laziness got us right there. <laughs> I took those waders off after I crossed and then they had this little bag that they go in. And I always shove them back in the bag and button it up and then throw them back across. That's what I did this morning. This time I was like, eh, to hell with that bag. I just tie these things up <laughs> and I'll tie them in a knot and I'll throw them across. Well, that didn't work. I threw them and the like wind caught them and <laughs> they landed right in, right in the, yeah, a parachute right in the middle of the stream. So I had to go out there and get them. At least it wasn't as deep as I thought. I thought it was going to be super deep there. I mean, I was only up to like there to get it. The waders are wet though. <laughs> the good thing it's going to be 85 degrees today. I think they'll dry out pretty quick. Yep. Trying to make it work out here in the wild. Well, it's about 7.15 right now. I looped back around, came down this ridge, and now I've just been standing out here on this point, just listening, doing some calling, seeing if I can locate that bird again. I only heard him one time on the limb and haven't heard him since. I'm assuming he got down and got with some hens, but it's kind of windy right now, so I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to hear him if they get down in this bowl. But I figure if I'm up on top, you know, calling, casting my call, hopefully he'll hear it or another gobbler will hear it and I'll come up to this high point here. I've been finding turkey scratching all the way in here, so they're definitely been spending time on this ridge back in here. Oh yeah, right there. Not far at all.
these gobblers around me for the last hour and 15 minutes. They've got as close as about 30, 35 yards. They were always in the thick cover. There was no shot, and plus I'd like to get them you know, 25 and in if I can. I know they can see the decoy right there. They have to be able to see the decoy. They just will not commit and come all the way up to it. But they came up the first time and they started to drift away and I did some more aggressive calling, brought them back up and they started drifting away again and more to my right. Called aggressive again and got them fired back up and they came in again, but they just kept doing the same thing. They're just working the lip of this bowl. And of course I could have shot them a hundred times over with a shotgun, but that is the challenge of hunting them with a bow. You have to have a really good hide. And that's what I've got right here next to this big oak tree this blow down behind me some limbs around me got some thick cover in front of me and they never had a clue I was here but if I would have had a shotgun I would not have got the show that I've gotten this morning because I probably would have shot one right away but I got to watch these things strutting back and forth and just hammering in this beautiful Missouri timber but anyways it's been an absolute blast this morning hopefully the other guys are in the birds too but at this point, I just quit calling. They've started to drift away. They're just still down in this bowl. But what I'd like to do, maneuver, maybe make a different setup. Just try calling from a different spot because I've been calling from this spot for an hour. But the good thing is they're still by themselves and they're answering everything that I'm throwing at them. So I'll be able to keep track of them. But no, I'd like to find a different spot to set up. If I can, move a little bit closer to that lip and see if I can pull them back up here. Well, it's about 10.30 right now. Couldn't catch back up with those gobblers. This is that big bowl that they came up out of. It was set up right over there and they were just working this back and forth for about an hour. Eventually they drifted away. I looped around up on that ridge there to try to make another setup and try to call from a different spot. And I got them to answer one time over down into the next bowl, but they were pretty distant and then that was it. I set up there for about 30 minutes and then never heard anything else. I'm assuming they were just, they continued to drift away. And I was set up back here on the edge of the thick cover. It was a great hide. They had no idea I was there. If they would have just closed another <laughs> eight to 10 yards maybe and got in the open, I would have had about a 25 yard shot, but they just didn't want to leave the rim of this bowl and come up to that decoy. And I know they could have seen the decoy for sure, but for a minute there when it was four gobblers, I thought maybe I was going to have them in my lap and it was going to be an epic beatdown of my decoy, but they just didn't want to come up. Head back to the truck, get some more water, get a little bite to eat, and then I'll just keep hitting these ridges and try to strike one up here. With all this action, I haven't checked in with the other guys to see how they're doing, so hopefully they got on some birds this morning as well. Greg got on them strong in there. Did he? Mm-hmm. Oh, you got a ticking arm pip. I found, oh, check this out. Oh, wow. Smokes. It's a big one. Almost tripped over it in the dark. Didn't even have headlamps on. Found it in the dark. Yeah. I found it in the dark with a red headlamp on as dim as it would go. And I was just watching where I was stepping. And I went to step and I'm like, if there's tines sticking up. So we're like, all right, we're getting out of here. We went to the water crossing. I crossed, in the, I crossed in the wiggies and I wadded them up and I usually put them in that little black pouch and button it up and toss it across. And this time I was like, no, nope, I'm just gonna wad them up and then tie them shut and then throw them to them. Just too lazy to shove them in the pouch. Take 20 seconds to shove them in the pouch. Well, guess what the hell happened? I threw them, I threw them. They got about halfway across and unfolded and just parachuted and fell right into the middle of the creek. And that creek is running. So then things are floating down the middle of the creek and me and Hayden, Hayden's on one side and I'm on the other. And we're chasing those waders all the way down the creek. I had to take off my clothes and go wade out there and get them when I got hung up in a tree. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up from down here in Missouri. I'm gonna continue hunting down here for the next couple weeks gonna take Miles out to try to harvest his second turkey. Greg's going back to South Dakota, Ted's going to Iowa, uh, Zach and Keith and maybe some of the other guys are going to Ohio here soon and we might even find ourselves in Indiana or Minnesota here. Really appreciate you guys watching and we look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Have a good one, good luck out there if you're hunting.